Okay. Well, welcome. Sinead Kennedy here for you therapy. How nice to see you. Um, we had a few technical issues earlier. Um, so what we've done here is we've, re we've done um, a Zoom meeting and we've recorded it and then we're going to post it out onto our respective Facebook pages. And then um, we'll organize a live um, Q&A session after the event from anything that you want to um, discuss or ask, myself or Sinead, um, we're happy to do that. So um, thanks Sinead, don't you just love technology? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so okay. unfortunately we weren't able to do this live, but let's crack on and I'll post it up and then um, we can do a live Q&A following on from it. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Okay. Well, th first of all, thank you for inviting me to um, have this uh, have this um, meeting with you. I, I'm I, Procrastination is uh, one of the major things that... Um, that I've looked at, dealt with, coped with, uh, come across on a regular basis. And uh, I'd like to offer a few solutions how, um, how you can overcome procrastination. So um, uh, first and foremost, if, if, you, if you just allow me, one of the things that I, and, and I know a lot of people um, associate with the word procrastination is, when that word is used, it usually invokes a feeling of disappointment, frustration. Um, it, it's definitely not a, a, a positive thought. Is that something you'd agree with? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's putting off the things that needed that need to be done or um, feel should be done or... Um, maybe not putting time into the things that you feel are important. Absolutely. And, and it's, mm -hmm. and, and, and often avoiding, um, uh, you know, the sheer avoidance of doing something that you're really not comfortable doing. Um, but let me um, explain this to you. Uh, obviously I, I, I love neuroscience and, and I love the way neuroscience is, um, moving forward in understanding how our brain, our thinking, our levels of consciousness work. Um, and we're not alone. They're, they're, science is showing that virtually everybody at some point procrastinates. Now, there are different levels of procrastination. So most people procrastinate on something. Then you've got the more regular procrastinators. And then there are unfortunately serial procrastinators and it's a major, major problem for them because they just can't get anything done. Some people call them lazy, but I think there's a more deeper rooted reason often um, for why procrastination is holding them back in their lives. Um, science is showing that procrastination is uh, linked to um, the limbic part of the brain. This is, this is um, the oldest part of the brain in our evolution. It goes back to um, very first um, mammalian type um, uh, creatures uh, where it's a simple process that works on the basis of think hungry, eat see something coming to eat you, run. And it's or if I linked. Free, it's yeah, yeah. So, so it's kind of like it's happening. Um, I really should do that project. And the limbic brain kicks in and goes, ooh, I want to do that. And it's a natural process that's operating in the brain. Now, the, the good thing is that the the... Uh, more advanced and, and younger level in the brain, uh, I think it's the neurocortex, is actually saying, why would you not do what you need to do? Because your life's going to be better. And this is where the level of sensibility, if you like, 
where you can actually make a difference is just simply recognizing that procrastination is um, is something that happens to all of us, but you can overcome it. It's possible to do that. So maybe if we can like rewind a, a little bit, because I suppose just to give an idea to maybe people in our group about what it is that you do. Okay, so I I'm a life coach. Okay, uh, I founded Body Fit Mind um, about four years ago. Um, Body Fit Mind it, it incorporates uh, mental fitness. Um, nutrition and well-being and and that came together because I, I ran health clubs for 25 years and um, so I had a good knowledge and understanding of both nutrition and um, and physical function uh, obviously since then I, I've, I've explored research and learned more about those two areas um, because I believe that in order to get and move forward in your life you have to get the balance of good mental fitness great nutrition and good physical function to keep you in the best state that you're in so out of that uh, my my all, all i offer is one-to-one -one coaching but i am in the process of developing um uh, uh, i'm writing uh, updating a book i've written about procrastination i'm looking to launch some um uh, online training courses relevant to personal development, nutrition, and physical function under the banner of be the best person you ever met. Because if you are not working on yourself and you know how important self love esteem is for people moving forward, then you can't be that person, that great person um, outside. And I think it's so fundamental to people's development that getting that relationship with self is key to it. And part of that is overcoming procrastination. Okay. So I'm curious then, you know, for you, what's so important about overcoming, overcoming procrastination for your uh, self-care? My 20 years experience of procrastinating um, because I, I, I remember my own journey. Um, part of me, uh, part of my journey began when I uh, was at a, a very poor point in my life. Uh, my business had, my marketing business had gone, uh, gone under. Um, I, and then I went to one of my, uh, I went to an event uh, run by Tony Robbins. Uh, many people may have heard of Tony, Tony Robbins, but he's a world-renowned life coach. And the, the program, uh, the weekend was called Unleash the Power Within. And I came away from there with a lot of things answered and a lot of hope and inspiration to move forward in my life. Um, and I first understood what procrastination was about. What I didn't do is I didn't do anything about it. I then, that was... Uh, close to 2000 I went back again because at those events you can only take so much um, and download it and use it I went again I I earlier uh, in 2000 I think it was 2004 um, and the first event had brought me into the health and fitness world because I ended up being um, a, a manager uh, of a health club um, the second event took me further for me to follow my dream, my new inspired dream, something I've been passionate about all my life, is to help people move forward in their life. So I signed up for, for um, a Robbins Madonna's training uh, course. Uh, I paid a fair amount of money for it. Um, and then I didn't do anything with it until 2012. So that was six years, but previously been inspired and motivated just pre 2000. I then reflected and thought, my God, you know, I am one of the worst procrastinators out there. So I, I went on a journey in, in 2015, I had a great opportunity 
to launch my body fit mind coaching business and i steadily um, built up that business uh, to where it is today so i'm at the point where i know what people go through i see the limitations that procrastination um, can bring to someone's life and it's always and often when i'm coaching people the very first thing i, I can tell a procrastinator procrastinator excuse me from a very first couple of meetings I have with a new client and they haven't done any work. Uh, they want to, they've said everything they want to do uh, to move their life forward, but they come up with excuses, oh, I didn't get around to that and procrastination is holding them back. So I focus very much on making sure that people that I can work with and they can work with me, we overcome procrastination at the very early outset. Excuse me, let me just turn this off. So I'm curious then, maybe from your perspective, what you think are the barriers that people put up to, you know, live in that state of procrastination? What is it that people need to break down in order to stop it? They need, that they, they really need to one, make the decision they're going to make a change. Recognize that procrastination is not serving them. And then, and it's not rocket science, yeah? It's not, it's, not, uh, it's not difficult. They just need to do a number of things to get them on the right track. And you and I both know, once you start to form a habit, and it's usually 30 days, a regular thing, keep doing it, keep doing it, it becomes the new norm for you. So in the, in the areas that um, I, I would recommend, and they're not all covered here, okay? But the number one thing that, that, that it's like the juice that feeds procrastination is distraction. And, and in this modern age with phones, with Facebook, with social media, with many, many channels on TV, the level of distraction is contributing massively to people's um, uh, procrastination. And, and, and that's one of the very first steps that I actually, uh, when I coach people, is to get to grips with, to get to grips with distraction. You've got to be in a position where you know when your phone's gonna be off. If you're gonna, if you're gonna work on something, there's no point having your phone on or your, TV on in the background, or people walking in and out of your workspace. So distraction is the very, very first thing that you need to get that you know um, sorted in place, and it's dead easy to do. Um, we all get this this blast of uh, endorphins when we hear the phone go or a new message comes in, and it, it's just feeding us. So remove that out of the uh, out of the frame. And then you, you, you can then move to step two. I, th I was thinking about when you were talking about how, um, you know, the limbic system and how um, procrastination is kind of linked to that. And that's interesting, I suppose, because you hear a lot of people say that maybe procrastination is a fear of failure. And the limbic system is linked with that fear response, you know, that fight, flight, freeze response. And so I'm, I'm curious about your thoughts on that. Well, I, I, I totally agree. It, it, is, um, it is actually feeding um, that, that response um, and, 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 it, and it actually feeds the, the lowering of self-esteem. It feeds the, um, the, the feeling that someone gets when when you know that they were meant to do something on a day i mean you know people have their to-do lists and uh, all too often the way to-do lists work is they come to the end of the day they've made an impossible daily task list they've done some of the work but what they're looking at is all the things they haven't done and and, and that's where the limbic system which is also, of course, connected to monkey mind, where you start to work and um, talk yourself 
down and not really be good to yourself. So I think recognizing that how the limbic system works and identifying how those emotions rise up and dealing with them is the way to, to move forward in an upward way, in, in, a, in a better um, improved self-worth way moving forward. So yeah, I, I agree, it's there. We can't get rid of it, but we can overcome it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, yeah, so when we kind of see that we're, you know, accomplishing tasks, that if we it you know helps us to overcome that kind of procrastination and that when we see that all the tasks that we haven't done that it puts us in that kind of um limbic system response that fight flight freeze yeah. response yeah i suppose i you know when we talk about um you know i hear from your story that you know there was a goal in mind and um, there was something that was feeding your passion, you know, that it was something you really wanted to do, and yet it was put off. So I'm curious what your thoughts are on that, because, you know, we can have those tasks that we feel, okay, they're really important and we should do them, you know, but yeah. what about the tasks that, you know, we really want to do them, that we're really passionate about them, that we, you know, and yet we don't do them. Well, th that often is, it, the, 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 the big goal is um, often the one thing that, that a lot of people struggle with, you know, the one thing. And, and, and it goes back to self-doubt, imposter syndrome, all the elements that go, go back to that. Um, one, of, one of the ways to overcome that is, if it's, it, let, let, let's use an example of, a, um, a, a a big project okay and uh, you you in your job you've been given or, or you're leading the project and what you're looking at is the outcome and the, the and you're just so fearful of that outcome that it actually prevents you from starting and that it, that is an, a key key thing and a trick by doing that is to at least start and say, I'm going to give five minutes of my time to this. Because it moves you from inaction to action. And often, and in many cases, once you get started, you then can progress to a higher level and a sense of achievement. So it's, it's an important element, uh, whatever. Also, belief, you know, have you set your goal too high? Uh, have you, you know, some people, you know, it's like saying, you know, I have this dream of... Um, uh, and I'm not, not knocking anyone, but, you know, I have this dream of, of, of being a billionaire and, and being on the first space flight. Well, you know, you, you're working um, a nine to five job, you're earning 60 grand a year. Is that going to happen? No, no. So being re realistic with your goals and ambitions is key. Yes, once you get momentum, you just raise the bar. Um, but don't set, you, don't set your bar too high that it actually stops you from doing what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so we can nearly set ourselves up for failure. Totally. You know, and the, the worst part, the worst people I come across, um, and luckily, you know, in, in, my, in my, certainly in my last 10 years, it hasn't happened, but it used to, is, uh, and, and I have a very dear client who suffered with this, is when you go out and you make you vocally share, um, I'm going to do this. Your peer group or your family group go, you can't do that. I mean, what are you doing? You know, are you kidding yourself? And I call them dream stealers. And the actions that you need to take sometimes is to change your peer group and be with like-minded mm -hmm. people and connect mm -hmm. with like-minded people because they. Anybody who's going to help you with your dream and goal is going to be a friend. Yeah. Anybody who's going to try and talk you out of it because they don't, they don't think what right have they got to judge you as not having the skills or the resources to follow your dream. 
when they're probably not following theirs. So be mindful. People have to be mindful of that. Uh, but some people live in that existence. And again, action overcomes fear. Change your environment. Change your peer group. Um, not saying cut them off, but spend more time with like-minded people. Yeah, well, I suppose, you know, this the self-care group that um, are posting this in, you know, I suppose that's a lot of what uh, we talk about is surrounding yourself with yeah. people that are going to lift you up. And that's part of your, you know, that can be part of self-care also. And, totally, um, yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, the procrastination very, around goals that you want to achieve or things that you would like to achieve or things that, you know, are important for you to be doing. Yeah. Um, and then the procrastination can kind of uh, stop you from doing that. And it's interesting because I do think, um, um, particularly from what you're saying, that it can be linked to self-worth, uh, self-esteem and fear of failure. Yeah. And it's interesting, I heard a story the other day about um, a, a, a lovely um, lady down in um, the south of Ireland. Uh, I think she's a, a celebrant, a humanist uh, celebrant, and um, it was something that she wanted to do for a long time. And she actually got to do it, and, 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 uh, but she didn't tell anyone about it. And it was amazing that a very good close friend of her came to her one day and she said, you know, I, I found something I think that would be perfect for you. And she actually showed her the same course, the same learning program that she'd just completed, but was never brave enough to share with her friends and peers that she was doing it. Um, so sometimes people can see that in you that like-minded people can see much deeper sometimes than you realize. They can see that opportunity within you. They can see that you can and believe that you can achieve your dreams. So that's about quality of, of connections. And, uh, you know, so many people miss out on that. Just by taking an action, changing your peer group, joining groups, going online, the, 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 the opportunities for growth and learning now are phenomenal and connect with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. so, so step number two, let's assume you're, that you're now on the journey, okay? One, there was a, a book um, called Do the One Thing that I read about six, seven years ago and it just really nailed it for me. The, the subject of trying to multitask. A, a lot of people these days, especially um, busy working moms, professionals, are spinning so many plates that actually, you know, they, they, they become overwhelmed. Um, they, they become disheartened because they're not quite finishing everything. Um, and, and that's do the one thing. The term multitasking does not apply to human beings. The term multitasking came out in the 60s when they were de developing computer technology. So they were finding ways of, of getting computers to do more than one thing at the same time. We can't actually do that. We, we think we can, but we can't because while you're trying to so-called multitask, you're actually moving your focus and concentration off of one thing that you're doing onto another and then switching back and then switching back to the thing that you were doing. And what happens usually is the quality of your output or your thinking is diminished. So by doing the one thing, I mean, um, you know, understand that you can't multitask. I'm going to come to um, planning and, and productivity next. Do the, by doing the one thing and doing it and completing it. And sometimes some tasks take longer than others. But I will say, often, when you, when you look at a task, yeah, you have a time frame in mind. And inevitably, you finish it far quicker than you think you were going to. So, mm -hmm. you know, you, go, you look at something on your to-do list. And you go, God, you know, I need to spend at least a couple of hours on that to, to get it done. And you spend 45 minutes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. doing the one thing 
completing that work is a very systematic way of getting your productivity increased uh, and, and getting in focus. So, um, yeah, look at that. Do the one thing. It's a great book. I, I will put, I'll put the, uh, the link of the book in, uh, in, in, yeah. in, the, in the replay on this. But, you know, amazing. And then you can start to move forward. I think I read. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I think I read a quote actually about uh, multitasking. I think it said like, it's doing uh, several things badly all at once. Or something yes. Like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so having, having done that, having moved forward, now, obviously, the journey is you've got to be on the journey. You've got to have made the decision that you're going to overcome procrastination. Um, because it's dead easy to procrastinate about overcoming procrastination. I know, I've been there. I'm going to fix this, but I'm going to start tomorrow, you know. And then the week goes by. And there's a, uh, one of the, the great things I learned with, with uh, my training with um, uh, Tony Robbins, he talks about a thing called the crazy eight. And the crazy eight is a state that you, you go through whereby um, you get frustrated you get angry over something, and it's usually something emotional. Um, you get disappointed with yourself, and, and you actually become, you could kick the dog, not that you would kick the dog, but you get so annoyed with yourself for not doing what you need to be doing. And then because we can't really stay in a human state for too long, the ache goes down, and then you become disillusioned and morose and miserable and you want to be by yourself and you're feeling sorry for yourself and then and so this cycle continues and it's only at the point of uh, uh, where, where the eight crosses that at that point where you're not overly angry and you're not overly miserable you can break out and take action and make a change and it's it's quite interesting how um, that works for a lot of people and and, and recognizing people that are in that in that circle, in that crazy eight. Um, and it happens to a lot of people, happens to me. I, I remember um, going through that process, being angry, being frustrated, uh, and then being disillusioned, morose, miserable, don't want to talk to anyone, and going through that for, uh, for quite a period of time. But I broke out. Great. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so what so, do you do? Yeah, go on. Sorry, Shana, yeah. I interrupted you there. Oh, so, so what I'm hearing is that, you know, first thing is to, I suppose, recognize that you're in it and want to make the change. Yeah. And to... And it's, to, it's, not, it's not a bad thing. Everybody suffers with it. P -p People sometimes think, oh, it's just me, you know, I'm going to be a procrastinator for life. Yeah. People don't like to admit they procrastinate because it's got a negative vibe to it but everybody does it at some level, at some level, at some extreme, at some point during their lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, perhaps that's good because it's taking some of the shame maybe out of it is that, you know, everybody does it. It's just to what extent is it impacting on your life? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And so then to overcome it, we're looking at, you know, recognizing and wanting to make the change and then taking steps to make it, uh, to make that change in terms of, I suppose, looking at the people who are around you and are they supporting that yeah. and making manageable goals that are attainable um, and taking the, the steps to do that. Yes. Then... To do that and to, to reap the benefits of all that work that you've done, and it's not hard work, it's not a lot of work, it's just being focused, is to get yourself organized. Mm -hmm. Okay, so organize and you start, you know, it, 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 whoever's watching this now, if you look at your, if you're not watching on a computer or you're working in an office or you're doing it from home, at whatever, look at your workspace. And if it's a mess, then that's not going to help you. You've got post-it notes around your screen and over the desk. It's not going to help you. So getting organized is a big step in making sure that when you, when I get to the next 
subject, yeah, uh, which is focus, making sure that you are prepared and in the right environment to do the things that you need to do. So clean up your, your workspace. If your house is a mess, clean up your kitchen, clean up your bathroom, okay, clean up your car, <clears throat> clean up your garage. If your partner's leaves a load of mess, clean his mess up or her mess up, yeah? And by being, if the kids are running riot and leave all their toys out, get them to clean them up and put them away, or you do it, okay? You take it all on board. Now, there might be a lot of work involved and you're going, well, actually, that's something I'd like to put off. Trust me, when you get organized, yeah, you go to another level and it enables you to be productive. And, and, and being productive is the most important thing uh, of this because what it takes you to um, by being productive um, and, and being able to plan, um, you've done all the work before, is that's when you get to that beautiful state of not only focus, but being in flow. And being in flow is, uh, as you and I know, is being knowing and downloading all the information that you've learned all what you need to know uh, and and producing something that's far better than when you were as a distracted person and putting stuff off and so what i mean is you have to get organized yeah and part of my coaching i actually say to i actually say to clients okay and, and they go, oh, no, well, uh, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't want to show you my bedroom or I wouldn't want to show you my workspace. So I actually get them to send me photographs of when they've tidied up, you know, uh, and that's called accountability. Yeah. But it means that they're, they're doing what they mean to do and what they need to do to get to the next level. And, and this is the level that you and I really can relate to because it's all about productivity and the tools that you need to move your life forward so I, I and I know and I'm, I'm surprised I didn't receive one but I know that you have a, a lovely journal okay so I've had to make my own here yeah uh, but yours looks so much better so I've got my journal here and all of my stuff goes in here and you know and I think you you're coaching on your your stuff on journals is brilliant um, but I've got, I've, you know, everything I do, I'm just get this now. Everything I do, I map out and record all my trainings, everything I do, it's all there, even though I've got my learnings and my course on my computer. Because by writing it and making notes of it while you're doing the work, your brain takes it in. Uh, a, a lot easier and a lot better and, and it sticks in the, in the memory a lot longer also your diary I have a planner um, so writing stuff down planning your week out these these are just two of the tools I use an online um, productivity piece of software as well and I integrate all of those uh, items to make sure that I'm planning and um, uh, moving forward on the tasks that I'm committed to do. And reflection at the end of the week, I'm, 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 I know I'm uh, speaking to someone who knows all about this, but reflect, don't beat yourself up. You know, how many people beat yourself up? That's the early stages, uh, what I talked about in terms of procrastination. You know, this self damage that we do, and we don't need to do it. You don't need to do it. And reward yourself. You know, even if you've only done three of your big tasks in a day and you have might have 15 minor ones, reward yourself, focus on those three successes. And that's the most important thing. Mm. Yeah, I suppose that reminds me of what one of my, uh, I suppose, loves, which is uh, the practice of self-compassion and trying to incorporate that in. And it's interesting that that even plays a role you know, with procrastination, that, you know, sometimes we put off things because of our own uh, maybe self-worth, self-esteem, um, and 
then, you know, in order to overcome procrastination when we're, you know, setting a task and if we do have that step backwards or we don't get everything that we had done on the list, that we're not, you know, uh, shaming ourselves, that we're uh, looking at the things we did do as opposed to the things we didn't. Absolutely agree with that. And, it, and it's so easy um, to fall into that trap if you're not if you're not loving yourself as much as you should do um, you know I mean I'm not being that you're arrogant that you are looking in that mirror and going yay I'm gorgeous but really um, looking into your own eyes look into that mirror and saying I love you to you deep into your eyes and saying it and repeating it for many, many people, is so hard to do. It's so hard to do. Yeah. But by keep doing it, keep doing it. And once you've got that, once you've got the gift of that, um, you can be more, you, you, you can give more, you can contribute more, you can help others to improve their lives. And it's something that's very dear to my own heart. You know, it's very important uh, to get that mm -hmm. level. And that's why, that's why I call... Um, the theme of my teachings um, be the best person you ever met you know once you are and you, you're never going to be the best person because that you know that you'll never reach that goal but if you're on the journey to being the best person you ever met you'll resonate with other people you'll be able to be more forgiving you'll be able to be more compassionate you become less judgmental uh, all of these great gifts that that are given to us uh, as a birthright that we sometimes and often don't use. Um, it's so important to to get that right. Yeah, well, I suppose it reminds me about the relationship with self and the relationship with others, and how a lot of the time if we're judgmental about ourselves or if we're self-critical, then that also impacts our relationships because we can be that way with others then as well. And so, you know, it's interesting when people, when I talk to people about self-compassion because it seems, particularly to Irish people for some reason, seems like it's, mm. you know, um, a bad thing. Like we shouldn't uh, be boastful about ourselves or whatever. But uh, really, you know, when you look at it in terms of helping your relationships as well, it's not just for you. Yes, it is for you, but it's also for your relationships as well. Because if you cultivate self-compassion, you also cultivate compassion for others as well. And their, you know, your relationships um, improve. Absolutely. And that is, that, that is fundamental to how we, how collectively uh, as human beings uh, we need to move forward because once you know once that's in place i mean we're seeing some horrific stuff at the moment and i i, I don't linger on that because you know it is what it is um how it affects me i don't watch it to be perfectly honest with you but what i do connect with is i connect with positivity i connect with good stories. I watch moving films. Margaret says, I, I cry every time I watch a movie. She's probably right. But at the end of the day, you know, it's all about what we control that comes into uh, our, our lives, into our minds. And there are certain things that we can do. I mean, um, what, one, of the, one of the things that I, that I looked at in terms of how to improve myself mentally, uh, how to obviously overcome procrastination and something that I've developed is there are certain things that you can do to remove the opportunity for procrastination and um, to get its foot back in the door um, and two things one be able to meditate and and that was something that I really struggled with but being able to be in the now and I remember um, uh, reading um, Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, a few years back, I was working in Dublin and I was driving into, I was driving into work. It was one, about this time of the year, one June day uh, in morning going into work. And I'd been reading this book and I, I'd read it avidly and, and I was rereading it again to get the key points. And I, and, and I followed the exercise of 
be in the now. And as I drove down uh, towards Nutgrove Shopping Centre, I suddenly had this kind of epiphany, this experience, this weird kind of uh, rush. And all the clouds were whiter than white and the sky was bluer than blue and had this amazing feeling of well-being. And it passed, but it kind of showed me that, that the power of mindfulness. And I think Stephen, uh, who we know, um, and his story about mindfulness is amazing, um, is such a powerful tool. Okay, So certainly, if you're not into mindfulness yet, you must have a look at that. And you can do it. It's very easy to do. And the other thing is sleep. Getting the right sleep pattern is so important. Um, and I know I really, if I don't have uh, enough sleep or I have a disturbed sleep, um, I, I really do suffer next day. And you can get into a routine, a habit of organizing your sleep or organizing your sleep location in such a way that you do get good sleep. And one of those is, mm -hmm. well, we all know, don't have a coffee after three o'clock because that caffeine is going to stay in your system and will keep you, um, keep you awake. The other one is turn off all of your electronic equipment, your phone, your tablet. Don't read or be looking at your, your tablet or phone before you go to sleep because that has a, uh, the, the, electrical, the, electro, the electromagnetic fields that they create impacts and will not get you into a stage of first stage uh, sleep, it delays it, it delays it. And science is proving that this is the case. So phone off, an hour before you go to bed, tablet off, relax. Okay, you might be watching a bit of TV, that's not too bad. And then when you put your phone and tablet on charge, not in your bedroom, outside of your bedroom, in another room, uh, so that you know that they're there and uh, you know, those, Simple little steps um, will help you improve your sleep. Better sleep, you're more cognitive, you're more on the ball next morning, um, you're better able to plan your day, less procrastination, you're moving forward in your life. Mm -hmm. There's a great, um, there's a, sorry, sorry, Sinead. There's a great. Um, <laughs> no, I'd <I> love <laughs> Oh, okay. I, no, it's just, I'd, I'd love to chat and keep chatting. But unfortunately, um, we're got, I'm going to have to wrap up. <laughs> okay, that's, that's not a problem. Well, well, we'll put some stuff into the, um, into, in, into the replay here. Uh, the, one last yeah. thing, if you've not seen it, Tim Urban on procrastination, a TED talk done about, I think about nine years ago, the funniest thing, and he's got procrastination in a nutshell. So thank you so much for the invitation to join you. No, thank you. And I'm sorry you had to had to cut it off. You know, I could talk about this for yeah. for ages. But what we'll do is post the video, and and um, we can do a follow up Q and A so that if anybody yeah. has any questions. Yeah. So any anybody who's got any uh, questions um, they want answering from Sinead and myself, post them up, and uh, we'll we'll we I think we've mastered how to do a live properly because I had no idea um, and I, I think it's to do with something called fa Facebook producer doesn't allow certain things but we've cracked it so we'll do that and thank you very much uh, Sinead once again for joining us and thank if you're you watching are. this on the if you're watching this on the replay everything we've mentioned there's a few links there um, for you to uh, to you to follow so thank you okay bye thank you bye 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 bye